So what today's video is going to be about is removing this front end loader. And I just want to go over the parts to make this loader come off. And it's very easy because the part is right here. And you probably were wondering, because I know I did when I first bought a Kubota tractor years ago with a front end loader. I was always wondering what that did. Okay, so I just replaced the pin, but it usually has just a simple uh, push-pull pin type of thing. But I put a actual snap pin on here. And what this does is this will come down and this little knob right here will go in this hole and it will create the kickstand. And let's do it real quick. Okay, so your loader has to be in the up position to do this. And again, I replaced this pin that was here with this snap pin. But you let this down and you pull this into that hole and that's all you have to do. And you do the same exact thing on the other side. I'm going to go do that real quick. Once I remove the weight of the loader, and it's engaged on these two lands right here, you'll see a land here, and then there's one on the other side. That's what holds your loader in place. But this pin right here, you'll be able to lift this up and then pull that pin out with no hand, really no pressure at all. Pull that pin out, you'll store that pin right there, and then your loader will be disconnected. And it's the same thing on this side of the tractor. Now your loader controls are in the way here, so you'll have to reach around them, but you can sit from the seat, you can lift this up, you can pull that pin towards me once I get the weight off the loader and then store the pin in that hole. Okay, so that took me maybe five seconds per side to put the kickstand down. And again, I started off this video with the front end loader in the up position, which you normally wouldn't do because you wouldn't want it falling on people or, or creating any sort of hazard, but I started out the video on purpose that way. So now that it's up, I'm gonna have to start the tractor and my audio won't be as good. I'm actually going to engage that kickstand with the dirt or with the driveway and put it down. And as I do that, the bucket's not going to be able to hit the ground. But at some point, I'm going to curl my bucket. I'm going to lift the front tires off the ground and you'll watch me grab the pins on the side of the tractor. What I'm going to do is start it up, keep it at idle. I've already got the brake engaged. I don't know if I need to take the brake off or not to allow the tractor to move uh, to loosen this, this pillar up right here but I'm going to articulate the bucket until I can reach over and this pin is loose. Hopefully the audio is clear, but I'm gonna push this down until the kickstands engage and they'll actually push back a little bit. And you can see the front tires on the tractor are starting to lift up. I'm gonna take my bucket. Kind of see what we got here. Not loose yet. So again, I'll just keep pushing down with my hydraulics. You see my front tires are moving towards the loader. Now the loader isn't really that heavy. And now that pin is easy to remove. I have the pins out. Now, I believe I articulate the bucket and this will come up out of those lands we showed you earlier. Okay, I saw it lift up then. Yep. So I'm just pushing down on the lever and it's coming out. You see the tires are going down on the ground. And it is detached, as far as I can tell, the tractor is detached from the loader. Now the hydraulics are still hooked up to it. Yeah, it's completely detached. So like I said, the tractor has not had the loader taken off, so it was a little stubborn there. But by working the hydraulics, you just saw this lift away, and obviously that pin will no longer go in that hole will no longer go in there. So this kickstand configuration is holding this loader up right now between that and the bucket. The tires are back on the ground and it's the same on the other side. I actually have to lift it up a little bit more and I'll show you why. So the loader actually fits in this little slot here. So that's got to come up or else the tractor won't be able to back out. Okay, so we're learning together. But you can see that this land right here goes down in there. And that was still in there a little bit. 
But you can see now it's completely separated from the tractor. And it's really evident on this side. So you can see that part right there goes in there first, and then it will articulate backwards and line up the pinhole. So right now the loader is completely held up by the kickstands. So now it's a matter of the hydraulics. Those of you with grapples and stuff that constantly take things off your tractor and put them on, you're probably aware of this or you are aware of this, but hydraulics can be hard to disconnect and reconnect. So what you wanna do is take your loader control and just make sure all the pressure is off the loader control. So I just saw this part move when I did that, but no pressure, no pressure, no pressure. I'm good to go. I've moved it all around. Now, these also have these caps. So when you take this off, this cap will stay on the tractor. This cap will come to the line. They're color coded, so you won't mess up how to put them back on, but also you can cap them so you won't get dirt in them. I won't have them off long enough to get dirt in them because this isn't where I want the loader in the middle of Piney Grove's driveway. But we're going to pull these hydraulic lines off and see what happens. So no pressure on that one. It came off very easy. A little bit of fluid. I'll get a rag to clean that up. I will cap that one just for now. This one is the white one. That one's not the, not quite as easy, but it seems like it's, it'll come off. Yep, came off fairly easy. So that's the white one. Now we have an orange one and a yellow one here. So we'll take this one off first, the yellow one, the one closest to the tractor. That one came off fairly easy. That's the yellow one. And then we have this orange one. And there's the orange one. Okay, the tractor's completely disconnected from the loader. I'm gonna go get a rag and then we're gonna go back the tractor up. I got some rags to wipe this off. One thing that's crucial with hydraulics is to keep all those fittings clean. So I wanna wipe that off. But uh, that was an easy process. That was the first time I've ever done it. And uh, you saw I didn't get it right the first time. And you may not get it right the first time, or you may, but either way, uh, it's going to be easy. And it's something that I plan on doing. Now, if I was doing this in the shop, I would have something underneath there to catch any oil drippings. I'm actually going to go ahead and put the caps on here, just so that we can get a close-up of what it looks like with the caps on. Because if you're going to operate the tractor without the loader on it, you definitely want these caps on here. Just keep any dirt, foreign material out of your hydraulics. I'm gonna start the tractor up and back it out. This will be the first time since this tractor was bought that she's been separated from this loader. Here we go, we're gonna put it back in there. So I put that right above that channel right there. The pin is right above the channel it has to drop into. Okay, turn the tractor off. I'm gonna move the hydraulics just to make sure that there's no buildup pressure in there. I don't know why there would be, but we're gonna put them back on in the reverse order of the way I removed them. So we'll go orange first. All right, orange went on very easy. We'll go yellow second. Uh, yellow went on very easy and we'll plug the caps back into each other male and female end so that they don't get dirt in them for the next time we do this all right caps are together all right so we got blue here and we've got white here so we're going to do white next Put that over there that pushed right on very easy all right one more so far this has been so easy here's the blue one boom piece of cake guys and i get it the hydraulic fluid will will swell in the heat or whatever when you're trying to put implements together. But uh, you're watching this, you know, first time I've ever done this and it's, it's really been easy. All right, so what we want to happen is we want that to go down and I'm not really sure which way the loader control will make it do that, but it's gonna be one way or the other, only two directions. 
All right, so I'm pushing the handle to the right and the loader's going down. Loader's going right down into the slot. All right, it's in the slot. Um, curl in the bucket. It looks like it's pulling itself into the land. Again, I'm just pushing the, I'm not doing anything with the transmission. I'm just curling the bucket. I'm pushing the front edge of the bucket down and it's pulling the tractor forward. It's pulling it forward, pulling it forward. Again, you can see I'm just pushing this to the right, pulling it forward. Let's see if that pin will go in. Looks like it should. Not quite. Yeah, I drove up a little bit. I can see the gap closing on it. I drove up a little bit, turn the handle of the pin, goes right in, try the other side, other side went right in, lift the bucket, pull this towards me, this doesn't look in any way bent or hurt, I'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, well that wraps up this demonstration of removing the loader from the L-Series tractor.